the Switch OLED, the one console that every person, every child has had in their life at least once, or even held it. There's many things a Switch OLED can do, but the one thing that it can do is play games. Not just any games, VR games. You may say, how is this possible? It's a how many year old console. The Switch controllers are very versatile. They can be used for many things, from motion controls. Let's just get right into that. Motion controls are everything. Now I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to use Switch controllers as full body tracking for all your full body dreams in VR chat, in blade and sorcery, in boneworks, in bone lab, anything. For this tutorial, you'll need six switch controllers. That's right, six. They don't need to have anything working on them. All the buttons can be damaged. You can be missing buttons. All you need is the IMU. Step one, get six switch controllers. And I am going to be doing an optional with an extra phone for three-way tracking with your chest, waist, and hip. I do not have an eighth tracker set for The eighth tracker would be for if I wanted to do feet tracking as well, but I don't have the eighth tracker. You will not need the switch. It's not important. All you need are random switch controllers from broken to damaged. The only thing that cannot be damaged is the IMU. And Bluetooth. Of course. <laughs> Step one, grab your ingredients. For how I'm going to do this tutorial, you'll need six pieces of cardboard. You'll need six switch controllers. And an additional phone if you want to do hip and chest tracking. You'll need a pair of scissors to cut the cardboard boxes. These are optional, but you'll damage them, so maybe not. You'll need some sort of strap. I use cut-up belts and random things around the house, like this uh, phone back strap. And you'll need a PC, of course, with Steam VR and all the softwares used for it. You will also need some sort of glue or adhesive or tape. I don't have any of those things. So I will be using, if you look at one of my trackers that I've already made, I used fabric. Step two on how to use Slime VR with switch controllers for full body tracking. First things first, we'll go to the web browser. We'll go to the GitHub page for Slime VR Open VR Driver. You want to install latest web Slime VR web installer. Then click install. More info and then run anyway. Next, next, next install. You want to install this first. Step two, you'll go to the GitHub page for Slime VR Wrangler. You'll click Slime VR Wrangler download, save. You'll minimize, go to your web browser, take downloads, and put Slime VR Wrangler into the desktop. Step three, go to open file again for file, open file location for SlimeVR server. Delete SlimeVR UI and SlimeVR jar. 
Then go back to your web browser, go to the SlimeVR Discord, and install these two files in a server on the SlimeVR server. They are the same files you just deleted, but they're the latest versions. Go back to your open file location. And then paste both of those files back. You'll want to make a shortcut of the SlimeVR UI and then you want to delete SlimeVR server. You want to open this once then go down to SlimeVR Wrangler and open this once. And that is step two on how to install Slime VR for full body tracking with Switch controllers. This is step three. This step is optional. For this step, you'll be making one of these. This is a strap where you can put the Joy-Con inside to where you can put it on your legs, lower legs, or waist. You first want to grab one switch controller. And outline it. Then, you'll want to put it on its side and outline on both sides. Far enough to where it passes the... If you don't want to break your controller, the stick. And do that on both sides. This will protect your Joy-Con if you don't want to break it in the future. Make another long lines on the two other sides to enclose the sides of the switch controller case for full body tracking. Then, we'll take our sharp pointing pointer or scissors, I'm using these for this, and you'll pop holes in it. As I do. I can find it, your scissors, and you want to cut out the frame. Yeah, I missed it. One more. One more. On both sides.
then you want to keep punching holes in the rest. This will be to easily fold the carpet. Should look like this. Then, bend at your popped holes until it forms a rectangle. At, while I'm doing this, this is optional. You can use boxes from the store if need be. It'll be slightly tight, and that's what you want. On one side of the box, you'll want to cut Unless you have tape or you don't have tape, this will be for you. If you have tape, you can just tape one side and leave the other side open. As you see, leave one side open. This will be to keep the switch controller from falling. Then you'll take your fabric and punch it into the hole. tie off long enough knot about that much. You will want some extra slack left. Then you'll take both sides, put it together as close, as non-close as possible. Give as much room for the switch controller as possible. You'll punch two more holes at the very corner. So then you'll put your fabric in the last two holes. Using fabric gives the switch controller some slack to be pushed in and out of the case when done of use. And tie as tight of a knot as you can. Try to make it as square as possible or rectangular. It should look like this. And you can cut this back. The reason I'm doing it this way is to show that anyone can do this. You don't need any fancy materials. Just shit laying, stuff laying around. And then you'll want to leave these and push them in. These will go in and out, so when you put your switch controller in, Push these under the, there, under there, and under there. You just want to get it stuck. The 
then go and take your switch controller out, go to the bottom, and cut two slits about three millimeters wide on either side. Poke your nothing, scissors and make it inch long hole on either side. Then you take your strap, doesn't matter what kind of strap you use, like I have this, and many other straps that I use. Take your strap, put it through the first hole, put it through the second hole, and now you have a good strap for your upper leg. And if you want to do your waist, you just have to put it through the long waist on a horizontal switch controller. It's way better because you have way more room to, room to move around. I used a Quest 2 strap that I cut. And then the rest of my other belt works pretty well. And that is part three of how to make a uh, Joy-Con strap for Slime VR and Steam full body strap. Step four, to use full body tracking with Joy-Cons. Connecting phase. First things first, you'll want to grab all six controllers and hold down the side button on each controller until it starts flashing. back to your, your PC and go to Bluetooth devices. Add a Bluetooth device. If you have any of the Joy-Cons installed, unpair them now. Then you'll click add Bluetooth or other device and start connecting all your Joy-Cons until they all have a flashing light that doesn't go away. It should go back and forth just like when it starts to pair. They might blink when they connect. And you have to wait until every device says set up device. And all six of them should be right here.
And if one says paired, uninstall it, then repair it. Every one of them have to have a flashing light and be connected before you put it into the server. Now all six, minimize, go to Slime VR UI and keep this open. So then click Slime VR Wrangler. Make sure every single controller has a flashing light that goes back and forth and click search for Joy-Cons. But before that, you'll find Blacklist. I don't have that because I've already done it on my computer. But you'll see a blacklist. You have to blacklist all of the Joy-Cons and Pro Controllers in, in the Steam software. It does it automatically. You'll have to just X out of Steam and the, the Slime VR Wrangler before you do anything until they're all blacklist. Then click search for Joy-Cons. Allow. All the Joy-Cons should automatically pop up and check. You'll see every one of them have numbers that move with the roll, pitch, and yaw. These are the IMUs at work when you move the Joy-Cons. Minimize. Minimize. And you'll see all of, you, you can go to settings. You'll want to turn on waist and feet. You'll want to click prediction. This is if you want better tracking. This one will be if you want a smoother experience with some latency. And this is no filters. I usually do prediction at around 60 to 70%. You want floor clip and skidding correction on, and then you don't need any of that. And this is if you want to see the numbers. And that is how you connect Joy-Cons to the Slime VR server. You will also notice that every Joy-Con has two lights that are always on. The, the uh, player one light and player four light. That means they are connected to the Wrangler. And if they turn off, you have to restart this whole process. This is also what it should look like. Step 5. Strapping your Joy-Cons. So in this step, you'll take all the six straps that you have created, the DIY straps, and you'll line them up. From the waist strap, all the way to top, bottom, left, right straps. and trust trap. So first things first, we'll take a pair of scissors and we'll, you have to find the worst pants that you can possibly have and you want to cut some holes in them. They'll look like this on both sides. It's to keep your Joy-Cons from sliding down your leg. It'll keep the strap in place and then you won't have to deal with them hitting your knees or moving back and forth. So we'll latch it on, put it through these holes. This is on only the top parts. You don't have to do this for the bottom because they will be going on your socks. Then you'll take 
your second strap. This one's a little beat up because I've been using it for a while. And you'll put it through the holes, just like the other one. And yes, this is a string to a bow tie. Works like a charm. As I say, You want to tighten it from here if you have a strap that has a tightening thing on it. Tighten it as much as you possibly can to where they don't go anywhere. Because you'll be moving a lot. All good. Now you see, Joy-Cons don't move. Take your Joy-Con and put it in the newly made strap case. You used the latches that we left on, push the bottom one in, push the side one in, push the other one in. Perfectly snug, tight strap. Then you take your other one, put this one in. This is what it looks like when the controller is inside. Then just fold it in. Fold all the sides in. The sides on this one fell off. Then for this, the bottom ones, I use the ends of a belt buckle. Because these ones move around a lot more than the other ones, because you'll be kicking. So you want a lot tougher straps that you can actually adjust. Get your strap, put it together. I took them all out so you could see the process. Go down. Sorry about that, I dropped my phone. Go down, pull up your leg, pull up your sock. Tighten as much as you possibly can. Your other one? I'm gonna have to cut these a bit more. Pretty tight when you put them in, so they don't move around on the strap. That'd be kind of productive. Well, can't leg up. Strap. And then put your joy cons. I'm using the festive. And it's held.
Waste trackers are a bit different. Like I said earlier, you want to do it the long way. Just like this. And then you'll put it on. Strap it around. How I did it is I can I can adjust through how much force I pull on this road. You don't need much. You don't want to choke yourself out crushing your lungs. It's enough to where the joy kind of can still move. Grab the strap you're going to be using. For the chest, which is in this one. I'm going to be doing it for a long, long way. Just like this. Well, technically, this strap I was using for a phone. And strap I was is this was is my hip tracker and the hip tracker doesn't act for what I'm doing doesn't actually need a a case. So what I, I did is I got my this just slid it in the back. I cut a little slit out. It keeps the joint con snug. So when I bend, it holds it like this. This is my hip tracker. Then I would have done a chest track. So I will not be putting the last one. And you can just literally put it on like a belt. But if you to keep these ones from moving a lot better, you want to do this. Pull up your pants as hard as you can, and these trackers will stay in place. Then, for the extra step, this is the optional step. You take something like this, and then you'll put your phone in it. My phone is my recording system, so I will not be doing but it goes right here on your chest, just above your waist rack, on your rib cage. And that is it for step five. Goodbye. Step six, body assignment. To assign the trackers, you will go open your SignVR server that you never closed. It should always be on when you're doing this. Because if you close the SignVR server, all the Joy-Cons will disconnect and they will not reconnect. And they say IMU trackers. One, two, three, four, five, six. So how do you assign, is you go to every body part that you have, because in the last part, I said I'm only, I'm not using my chest right now, but you will, that's the one you will want to be using for this. I'm going to be putting the, that one tracker on my hip. So right upper leg, you, t 
take your right upper leg tracker, you shake it, and you'll see it light up, and you want to click. That wasn't my right upper leg, that was my left. I am an idiot. You take your lower left leg and you rock it back and forth. You take your lower, lower right leg and you rock it back and forth while sitting down. You, ta you sh take your upper leg tracker, your right upper leg tracker, and you shake it. And then you click. You take your, for you it'll be the chest, but me for the hip. Take your, your chest tracker and shake it. Then waist is self-explanatory. You have just calibrated or assigned trackers to your body parts. Good job. This next part of this step, you'll be doing mounting and uh, switch controller rotation. You'll want to go into your Wrangler app and have that open as well. If you look down, you'll see a whole bunch of, of trackers just randomly around. It's because all the trackers are not positioned correctly. The first thing you'll want to do is you want to click, go into a good posture, standing straight up, forward. If you move to the side, the headset it goes straight down so the trackers will be off centered. So I'll click reset. You look down. You'll notice that all the trackers are in position. But when I move my body, move my leg forward, the tracker goes backwards and just starts flying everywhere. It's because the rotation of the tracker, the orientation is wrong. So first you want to do is, depending on which way you put your controller on, if you remember, we put all the controllers except the waist and the hip or ch chest tracker horizontally. So all the other ones should be up. Now they're all up. But also put the ones that you put horizontally, horizontally. Now that's good. And then click reset. And do all the same good posture as before. When I look down, you'll notice that it still goes back the wrong way. It's because the mounting is wrong. You want to go to mounting, you want to go to manual. They do not have an automatic mounting just yet and you'll have to find all your trackers and depending on which side of your body they are on. So if your tracker is on the left side, then you'll say it's on the left side. At first though, you wanna put them all in front. Then front, left. All of yours should be on the front because you only have a, ch a chest and waist tracker unless you went farther in this, this tutorial. You'll notice how all the trackers have gone crazy and are in different positions because the mounting was very off and you want to click reset. And now if I move my leg forward it goes forward. If I bend my leg back and forth, it goes back and forth. But this one didn't. It's because the mounting is right, but this time the orientation is wrong.
I will be right back to figure this out. <laughs> figured out what I did. I didn't flip the blue tracker upwards in here. Now, I click reset. Now if I move one leg up, back and forth, goes back and forth. Other leg up, And if they do, just click quick, quick fix. Drop my controller. Then we can go into Steam VR, VR chat, and this is the next step. I will not be changing to another video. Okay, now that we're in VR chat, if we go to our mirror, we notice that we're not moving. Because we'll have to calibrate. You'll want to go into a calibration and you'll see tiny white balls. You go to your desktop from Steam VR, you want to minimize, click reset. You'll notice how the balls are actually in between, in the middle of your legs now. We'll just put our arms up. Like that. And now if we bring our up, 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 we should be moving. If you notice, my body's acting weird. It's because I don't have a chest track. And my mounting is kind of off. I will fix that now. The mounting is good now. My hip should move with my hip. My waist should move with my waist. And then I don't have a chest tracker on. And that is Step six, you would now have full body, but if you want it better, you'll go over to here, body proportions. I will not be doing this and I'm not because I want to keep my settings, but I will still show you how to do it. You'll go to your, this will be automatic and it, you might have to adjust manually afterwards. So you want to be in front of a chair and then click I am in front of a chair. And then you, it'll ask you to read something and then you do whatever it says. Start recording. Bend the knees a few times. Sit on a chair and stand up. Move body to the left and to the right. Move body to the right then move left and wiggle. 
your calibration is not complete. So this is a, a quick demo of the full body tracking in action. There can be problems and you might have to reset a bunch. There is a lot of drift with this method, but it works and you'll probably have a lot of switch controllers that are broken. Those damn drifting sticks. So I'm, I'm gonna walk around. You might, it might look a little weird. That's just the problem with ancient technology. I can bend my leg up. You notice my leg has drifted. How to fix that? Go in the slime VR and click reset. For quick fixes, click quick quick reset. You can also sit down. If it moves with you. Of course, I do not have a chest tracker on. Standing up is kind of weird too. It actually just drifted about one foot. But my last step will be showing you how to make a a uh, quick select button to fix not having to go into your slime VR server. It'll be a dedicated button, the X button, on your controller. I'll see you there. For the last step, we'll be making a key binding for the quick reset and the reset button. This is a very quick and simple last step to becoming a madman with switch controllers. So first things first, you'll want to exit SteamVR. It will take a second, of course. You want to go to Steam, and you want to install OVR Advanced Settings in the store. You can exit out of this. Then, you'll want to start up Steam again then X out with OVR opening. This will help the settings like appear. Then you want to go to app data and advanced settings team. Open into the settings notebook pad and go all the way down until you see keyboard bindings, keyboard shortcuts, Y, U. You have to change the M. These will all three of these will be an M. You want to change it to Y and U. Then you want to click X and save. Then you want to go back into Steam VR. X out all that. You want to go to shut, start up, shut down, manage add-ons, and you want to turn on the OVR add-on, if it isn't already. And you want to go to bindings. We could make our own binding, but we will not, because why would we make it harder for ourselves? We'll go two clicks on back, more applications, go all the way down, CBR feeder, and just steal one from someone else. It's not stealing if they give it to us, right? Make it easier for ourselves. Find a, bi find a binding you like from any random person.
surprised when I'm not finding one I like. Or ones that work. That is the one. And now when we stand up, we should be able to just automatically reset. There you go. This is the end of the tutorial. Thank you for watching. You may have known a lot of the things that I've, I've done in this tutorial. But this is for someone that doesn't knows nothing and they're probably a kid. Goodbye.